but this is how I determine whether I, where I am on the breakpoint in real time. This is not theory. This is not a whiteboard stuff. This is um, this actually just happened, and I was super excited to take you along with me. Welcome back, everybody. So um, I'm going to do a little field test, and we're going to find out how much free ammonia we have in the water. Um, a while ago, I put out a breakpoint chlorination video and I've been waiting for an opportunity to show you what I mean when I've got low chlorine and I don't know which way to go. Do I add chlorine or do I back off the chlorinator? Um, if you go, if you wait till the end of this video, it'll pop up on your screen. You can go check out that breakpoint chlorination video. But I find myself, I believe, uh, very close to the breakpoint. There is a little free ammonia left and that's why I'm not sure what to do. And um, I'm going to do a little trial. I'm going to actually back the chlorinator off first. But before we do that, I want to show you why I'm gonna, I've made that decision. So um, something just seemed a little off in the contact chamber uh, based off the readings I was getting off SCADA and um, some of our ORPs were just giving me some reads that I wasn't really comfortable seeing. So I went and I took a grab out of the um, contact chamber and uh, I'm gonna do that for you real quick. I'm gonna actually do a little DPD test. Um, and normally when I'm chloraminating and I've got the plant running in such a way right now that I've got a blended effluent, it's mostly MBR and a little bit of trickling filter. But when that happens, I can typically run a pretty stout um, chloramine residual, but um, that's not what's going on. And uh, so I, I, I'm not going to do a high range. I'm going to do a low range. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, total. I'm going to hit a total and you see it's turning pink. Okay, this is a three minute test. So that looks like a drinking water. Um, that's not good. So I want, I want a lot stronger of a concentration than that if it's going to be total or, or combined. And so I'm going to hit it with free and you're going to see it's not going to turn a color. If it does, it's a very um, faint pink. And so, yeah, you see that right there? No free. So that means I'm not break pointed. I've got monochloramines in there and not a lot of them. These are not very powerful, okay? Um, when I ran it, it was about a 1.8. So that's, that's really not where I want to be. So, um, I'm not going to run this again, by the way, if you're doing a DPD test, I'll cover all this again when I get to the disinfection video, which is coming later. Um, this is a three minute test on, um, total and then you read free right away. So now I have a decision to make. What am I going to do? Well, <clears throat> I need to see if there's free ammonia first. Okay. If there's no free ammonia, it would be not a big deal for me to turn up the chlorinator and just break point and go home with it, you know? But um, let's see if there's any free ammonia. So what I'm gonna do, how this test works, is I'm gonna fill two sample cells, 10 milliliter, okay? With my sample from the contact chamber, that's this, I, it's a cannibalized back tea jar. This is my little grabber that I use. And then I'm gonna turn on my DR890. I use a DR890, it's old, but it works. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the day this thing dies so I can get a DR900 or whatever Hawk has decided they're gonna come out with then. So um, what I do first is I get my program on this one. It's program 133, um, and I'm going to hit the timer button. Um, this is a chlorination solution. So the, what I'm doing here is I'm going to put a little, one drop of chlorination solution into the 10 milliliter sample, one of them, and remember which one you did. And I'm gonna swirl it around and shake it up, make sure it gets nice and mixed up in there. And then I'm gonna give it one minute reaction time Okay, and I'm going to talk to you all. It reacts. Um, it's, in essence, going to bind up all of the free ammonia that's in there. And I'm going to take two monochloramine reagent packets. I'm going to put one in my original that's not got the drop in it. And then I'm going to put one in this sample cell that I just put the drop of chlorination solution in. And if there's any free ammonia, there's going to be a discrepancy between the two. Okay, because in theory, that... Uh, free ammonia just got bound up by chlorine, and so this should have a higher monochloramine um, read than this one, if that makes any sense. Please, if that doesn't make sense to you, put it in the comments below. I'm happy to um, answer that. So we're getting close. Okay, now we've hit the timer. Two, one. There's my timer. So I'm going to dump the first packet in. I like to shake them up together. I'm going to dump the second packet in. Okay. Talk to you about my equipment in a second. And then it's a five minute sit setup. Um, and I'm not gonna talk at you for the full five minutes. We'll edit to the end. And you're gonna see that these will be different colors at the end. You see they're both um, kind of yellowish now. 
um, you'll see at the end of five minutes after the reaction's done. So anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, fast forward to the five minute mark and let's take this read. Okay, so the five minutes is up, the timer's gone off. Um, I've, I've got my two samples. This is actually the way they were set up. So I've got my one that I had the drop in that I chlorinated and my monochloramines, my actual monochloramines, okay? So um, unlike a DPD test where you zero out clear water and then hit it with the DPD and it turns pink, this, I use my monochloramine as my zero, okay? And I um, then compare it against the one that had the um, ammonia bound in it by that chlorination drop. That's gonna tell me the difference between the two, okay? And so I'm gonna read it out. 0.2 milligrams per liter. Okay, it could go either way. Um, I, I My guess is in the end, actually, now that I saw that read, um, I'm going to guess that I'm actually going to, uh, in the end, decide to break point and that it'll actually be better to break point because um, that's not a lot of free ammonia that's left, but I do have to oxidize the chloramines that are in there. So let me actually start by backing the chlorinator off. There might not be all that much ammonia to begin with, but what I like to do first is back it off to make sure I'm not on the wrong side of the hump okay and going towards the break point if i'm on the wrong side of the hump and going towards the break point and i back off i might actually increase my chlorine residual if i can get it above a six i'm good okay and then i'm using less chlorine okay so let's i'm gonna go do that on SCADA, and we're gonna come back in about 30 minutes after it's had enough time to mix and do its thing and we're gonna see where we're at okay here we are about an hour later I've already seen some good results from our ORPs. So let's see what our field results are. Now, I'm going to have to use a high range this time because it's um, this is a high range read. Look at your instructions on your um, your colorimeter or whatever it is to if you don't know the difference between high range and low range. They're going to be different between analyzers. So I'm going to zero this out and I'm going to um, I like to mix it in the glass uh, personally. Um, and I kind of guesstimate the five milliliters and I'm going to transfer that over to the high range when I'm done. Uh, for analysis. This is a field test. This is not being reported. Um, so I can use these for just um, field adjustments. Wow, I can already tell. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but that is significantly different than what it was. It's much darker. I'd say probably three times darker than what it was when I had the 1.7, 1.8-ish read. So uh, this is a three-minute test. I'm going to edit the video. We'll come back in three minutes and we're going to read it out. So I'll see you in three minutes. Okay, here we are three minutes later. Let me get that out of here. I'm going to um, transfer this over. I'm going to wipe off my sample cell, make sure no droplets are going to give me a false positive or false high or false low read. And I'm going to hit it real quick with my analyzer. And it is a 4.2. We are way better than we were at a 4.2. That's great. So, um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move these over. I'm going to clean these out. I got distilled water here, but I'm going to wait actually till I get over to the sink. Okay, so now what I want to do is see if my free ammonia has gone up any. And you should see a huge difference in the chloramine or the monochloramine levels um, this time. Uh, the original won't be so pale because we've, we've gone quite a bit higher. So remember, I'm going to change programs. I'm going to get my timer ready. I'm going to give my little chlorine drop. Okay. Mix it up real good. Mix, 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 mix. And timer starts. I'll see you in one minute to add the monochloramine reagent. Okay, here we are one minute later. I'm gonna add the monochloramine reagent packets to each one. This is the one without the chlorine drop. This is the one with chlorine drop. Do, do, do. Okay. And I'm going to shake them up real good, make, them, make sure they're nice and mixed. I try to keep all my stuff out of the sun. That's why I'm kind of leaning over the way I am. Uh, UV can affect certain reagents. Um, okay, now we're going to let it set up. I'm going to hit the five-minute timer, and I will see you back here in five minutes. Okay, so here we are back five minutes later. And look how much darker these are from our original test. Look at those. Go back, rewind the video to the earlier part. Let's see if I can get that in a good place you can see it they were very pale. I turned the chlorine feed in my plant down by about 30%. I made a pretty dramatic change. Um, and look at that. Uh, so we were on the, in the destruction in zone C, the destruction area of the hump. Again, if you don't know where I'm, or beyond the hump on the breakpoint curve, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the breakpoint chlorination video. 
take a look. It'll be on your screen at the end of this, and you'll see what I'm talking about. We were cl closing in on the breakpoint. There's plenty of free ammonia in here. So now I'm going to um, run the test real quick. Wipe this off. Wipe this off. I'm going to zero out. This is my monochloramine. Let's see how much free ammonia we have. I mean, it's possible we don't have any extra free ammonia because it's still bound. These are based off ratios after all. Let's see. I would imagine we do have a little more. 0.57. Yeah, so my free ammonia went up as well. Um, uh, and that's great because um, I have ammonia limits. So there's a game to be played there too. Is that like, I don't want to be, ex I'm discharged of the ocean. I don't want to be exceeding my ammonia limits either. So this is good. Um, I would imagine if I backed it off more, um, I would have more free ammonia and um, my chloramines would probably actually continue to climb. But this is now where I'm going to start playing. I'm not going to take you along with me on this one, but I'm going to start playing with the dose a little bit. Um, I'm going to back it off just a little bit and maybe increase it just a little bit. And this is where the fine tuning happens. But this is how I determine whether I, where I am on the breakpoint in real time. This is not theory. This is not a whiteboard stuff. This is um, this actually just happened. And I was super excited to take you along with me. So um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you got anything out of this, please like, subscribe, pass it to your friends. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Um, if you're a laboratory analyst, go easy on me. I'm an operator that does field testing. Uh, this is not reportable stuff. This is process control stuff, okay? Um, and as you can see, it worked very, very well. So anyway, have a great day, everybody. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.